So in this module, uh, we're gonna talk about uh, the conjugation property of continuous time Fourier series. Um, so if X of T is a periodic signal, which has a Fourier series decomposition, and the Fourier series coefficient is given by S of Ks, uh, we wanna answer the question, we wanna ask the question, if I take the uh, conjugation of the signal, X conjugate of T, what are the Fourier series coefficients um, for, uh, for that conjugate signal as a function of, um, of A's? So in order to address this, um, let me uh, use um, the uh, analysis equation, although you can go ahead and use the synthesis equation as well. I'm gonna use the analysis equation. So B sub Ks, which are the Fourier series coefficients of X conjugate of T is defined as one upon T, uh, the integral over T, the integral of X conjugate of T, E raised to one minus J, K make an T dt. Uh, one of the important things to note here is when I take the conjugation, um, it is, should be clear that the periodicity is not affected in the sense uh, that the signal, the X conjugate of T is still periodic and moreover, the period for this uh, is exactly the same as the period for this. And, um, and uh, therefore the frequency of X conjugate of T is also omega naught, which is exactly the same frequency as, as X of T did. Um, so from here, uh, my objective really is to try to uh, to try to um, to try to relate this expression uh, to a case um, and uh, one of the things that I observe is a conjugate here. So I want to get rid of this conjugate. Um, let me try to get rid of this conjugate by taking conjugation uh, on both sides. Um, so in other words, if I take conjugation of on both sides. On the left-hand side, I get BK conjugate, uh, which is equal to one upon T um, integral over T, X of T and E raised to power plus J, K, omega naught T, DT, where the reason why I have a plus here is because, is because um, of, of the conjugation operation. Um, so, um, now it should be, it is where we want this to be. So um, BK conjugate therefore is actually equal to one upon T um, integral over T X of T E raised to power. And the only difference that we observe on the right hand side from A's is that there's a plus sign here. Um, so, this, that plus sign can be uh, written as two minus signs. This is minus J and minus K omega naught T, D, T. And clearly you can see that what you have here, this thing here is just A minus K. So our conclusion therefore is that B, K, conjugate is actually equal to A minus K. And um, if I take the conjugation on both sides again, um, this implies that B K is actually equal to A minus K conjugate. So this is really A minus K conjugate here. Now there are <coughs> important implications of this, this conjugation property, in particular for the case when, um, when X of T, for example, is, is real. So if X of T is real, then uh, the Fourier series coefficients of X of T, they're gonna satisfy some properties and we're gonna try to identify what those constraints or what those properties are gonna be. So if X of T is real, we know that um, X of T is equal to X conjugate of T. And that appears here because of the fact that uh, X of T is real, so X is gonna be equal to the conjugate of itself. Um, and if X of T is the same as X conjugate of T, uh, this would mean that the Fourier series coefficients corresponding to this signal are exactly gonna be the same as the Fourier series coefficients are corresponding to 
uh, this signal here. Because of which, I can conclude that the Fourier series coefficients of x, which are a k's, are going to be equal to the Fourier series coefficients of x conjugate of t, which are a minus k conjugate. And this is called, if you look at this constraint, what you're really saying is that all of the Fourier series coefficients of the real signals are going to satisfy this property, which is called conjugate symmetry. So this is called conjugate symmetry. So what that means is a plus one is going to be equal to the conjugate of a minus one. A plus two is going to be equal to the conjugate of a minus two and so on and so forth. And if the signal is real, that signal will always satisfy um, this property. Um, so this is one result that we have uh, from, the, um, uh, from, from the conjugation property. What if we had not only did we have that the signal is real, but we were also given the additional, uh, uh, additional fact that x of t is, x of t is even as well. And even. If x of t is real and it's even, then what that means is that x of t is equal to x conjugate of t. Not only that, but also x of t is going to be equal to x of minus t as well. And this is going to imply that as we've seen, as we've seen over here, that a k's are going to be equal to a conjugate of minus k. In other words, the Fourier series coefficients are going to be um, are going to be conjugate symmetric. Moreover, from here we know that a k's are going to be equal to a minus k. In other words, the Fourier series coefficients are even around k equals zero as well. Right now, we can combine these two. So, if if this is equation one and this is equation two, we can combine equation one and two to try to get a condition on what uh, a condition on the Fourier series coefficient when the x of t is real as well as it's even. So, um, so if I combine equation one and two, we get, um, so what we're really saying is that a k equals a minus k conjugate and, and a k equals a minus k as well. So what we're gonna, have therefore is that a minus k conjugate is equal to a minus k. And if I replace k with minus k on both sides, um, so what I'm going to get is that a k conjugate is actually equal to a k. And they, I mean, so what, what do you get? I mean, what you have here is the fact. So this thing implies what? This thing implies that the Fourier series coefficients are real. So in other words, if your signal x of t is real and it's even, so if you satisfy these two conditions, your Fourier series coefficients, Fourier series coefficients are going to be real as well, right? So that's the, uh, third implication, uh, second implication. Let's consider a third scenario where not only is the signal real, it is also an odd signal, right? So what that means is that because of, because of the signal being real, I know that x of t is equal to x conjugate of t. And because it's odd, I know that x of t equals minus x of minus t. Now this thing implies that a k, as we've seen earlier, is equal to a minus k conjugate. And what this implies is that a k equals minus 
k minus k as you would have done already in one of the exercises earlier. So if this is equation three, and if this is equation four, um, I can combine them together. Combining three and four, what we have is that a minus k conjugate is going to be equal to the negative of a of minus k. So we have a minus k conjugate is equal to minus a of minus k. And once again, if I just replace k with minus k, that's something I can do. So what I can conclude is that a k conjugate is actually equal to minus a of minus k. And if you just start to think about what this condition means, this, what you're really saying is there's a complex number. And if I take the conjugate, sorry. So if I take the, there's no minus here. So if I take the conjugate of that complex number, so if I have a complex number and I take the conjugate of that complex number, what I get is a negative of the original complex number. And the only complex number that's gonna satisfy this condition um, is gonna be a number which is purely imaginary, right? Is purely imaginary. So that's why our conclusion is that the Fourier series coefficients for this third scenario are purely imaginary. So all of these three implications, all of these three implications that you have here, um, one, two, one, uh, two, and three, are there because of the of, of just this one property that we derived, which is the conjugate symmetric property. So 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 once again, in conclusion, if x of t is real, the Fourier series coefficients are going to satisfy this conjugate symmetric property. If x of t is real and they're even, the Fourier series coefficients are going to be purely real, is there going to, are going to be real coefficients. If x of t is real and odd on the other hand, then the Fourier series coefficients are going to be purely imaginary.